to go straight to the hearing of God's word because of the interest of time and today for those of us uh, who are not new uh, there is a particular series that I was carrying out and I want uh, to announce that uh, today I bring the series of Jonah to an end we are in chapter number four of Jonah Jonah chapter number four is uh, our last sermon in the book of Jonah and I want to read verse 1 all the way to 11. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. The Bible says, But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and a compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Uh, then uh, first number three. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shed, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shed for his head, to his his discomfort, and Jonah was very happy about uh, the vine. But at the dawn, uh, the next day, God provided a worm which chewed uh, 
the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you have a right to be very angry about the vine? I do, he said. I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? That is a question to Jonah. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we are coming to you, King of glory, this particular time and moment, as we appreciate a time to sit in your presence, King of glory. We are living at a time that uh, gatherings are so many and uh, gatherings that are sometimes not for promoting the kingdom of God but also promoting the kingdoms of the world. And I want to say thank you God that uh, in such a particular time and a moment you brought us together to hear a message of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And I am praying that our Father even as uh, we all sit to hear from your word, I am praying that you speak unto us uh, from the message that you want us to hear. As I stand in this altar, I am just but a vessel to be used of you, King of glory. It is by grace and mercy that I am standing in this altar. And I pray that our Father, in the name of Jesus, may you make use of me as a tool in your hand, uh, even as I deliver the message that you have laid in my heart. I want to pray that you may grant me the utterance to share your word, the King of glory. I want to pray, over Master, that you may grant me the spiritual authority, over Master. Yes, even to share your word. Yes, I pray that in the name of Jesus, your word which is sharper than any double-edged sword, dividing bones and marrows, is going to penetrate in the hearts of men and women. And I want to pray that you are going to convict someone in regard to your kingdom that our father we may all be blessed and lifted of you king of glory may your blessings be upon us shower your spiritual blessings to us this day in jesus name we pray and all of us church we say amen, amen. can we shout a better amen all of us we say watu ambao wamembarikiwa watu ambao wameinuliwa na Mungu all of us we say can we celebrate the Lord Jesus because of his love and faithfulness? Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Today I want to present to you our last topic in the book of Jonah entitled, uh, When Christians Are the Problem. That is our topic today. When Christians Are the Problem. And I want uh, to propose and uh, submit to you that uh, Sometimes uh, the world of sinners is not getting converted, not because uh, these men and the women outside there at uh, Koinange Street, uh, outside there at Pewa Street, uh, outside there at uh, the big bars, uh, you know, Paris, iko hapa pande ingine, kama ujui, hii mba iko famous sana, kama ujui, ukipotea sana sema uh, karibu na Paris, hapo ndiyo kanisa ni naenda, hii iko famous sana. Ukipotea sana sema engesa vila. Engesa vila ni ya miaka nyingi sana kutoka miaka ya 2000, I tell you. Some of these bars are famous than our churches. And I want to say that uh, sometimes guys who are going into those places, uh, they, it is not that they cannot be converted. But sometimes uh, the church can be a problem. Believers can be a problem. Why some people are not getting converted. And I want to quote a friend of mine who is uh, now late. That is uh, uh, the late Mzee Richard Kiseli. Aliniambia kitu. Unajua hapa, sometimes there are those who are coming as uh, 
families na kuna wale ambao wanakuja bibi peke yake kuna wale ambao wanakuja bwana peke yake one time as i was talking with the late ms richard kiseli I was I'm talking that because uh, even the family knows I was a friend to him. Aliniambia mchungaji Sometimes when you are uh, doing you are counseling to some of uh, the people that are coming into your office because uh, their husbands are not coming to the church. You need to know that uh, the husbands are not the problem. The problem is the wives. Usiseme amen. Where is the amen? Aliniambia hiyo kitu. The, the wives who are in the church every Sunday are the problem. That is uh, the gospel according to my friend Richard Kiseli who is now in the presence of God. Akaniambia ukiona mzee pia ambaye anakuja kanisa na mama akuji, mama anakataa kanisa. The problem is not the wife, the problem is the uh, the problem is not the mzee ambaye anakuja kanisa kila juma ni wife. Na pa, but his father also is uh, true. Na somehow, somehow, I, I agreed with him, Mr. Richard Kissel. So I'm saying today, from uh, evaluating and uh, uh, looking at uh, chapter number four of Jonah, the, the, the problem here is not so much about the sin of the Ninevites, uh, but there is an attitude with Jonah that is also affecting the church of today. There is an attitude with Jonah that is present in the church of God today. And we are going to look at uh, when Christians are uh, the problem. Sometimes uh, umoja, umoja can be fully converted, but uh, some of us here, we are uh, deterring people from coming to Christ. Uh, we are uh, deterring people from coming to the saving knowledge of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And before I continue with our sermon of the day, let me do a quick recap on what we have learned in the book of Jonah. We have learned there are seven important topics that we have uh, tackled in the book of Jonah. Our sermon number one uh, was uh, the message of restoration in the book of Jonah. Our sermon number two was uh, when God storms in your life. Our sermon number three, beware of uh, sleeping on God's assignment. And our sermon number four, beware of things uh, hindering your divine destiny. There are things that are going to come on your way and uh, hinder your divine destiny. Our sermon number Number five, the sovereignty of prayer in times of crisis. That is chapter number two of Jonah. And uh, someone in number six, understanding the nature of God is chapter number three of Jonah. And uh, today, it is my pleasure to bring unto you our last topic in the book of Jonah, when Christians are the problem. And I want uh, to propose and to submit to all of us that uh, Christians are becoming a problem to the world of sinners because of number one, embracing the self-centered attitude. We have so much embraced uh, the self-centered attitude. Kuna watu ambao, kuna wokovu ambao, it is only limited to themselves. Their salvation is not uh, that of uh, being known by others. Uh, you know, uh, kuna huyu mumbiri ambaye anakuanga comedian. Anaitwa mchungaji nani huyo Reverend Mwoki? Huyu wa comment, eh, wa, eh? Eh, kuria, pastor kuria ambaye anasema kuna saa ya bwana asifiwe na kuna saa ya kazi. You know, Monday. Kuna saa ya bwana asifiwe na kuna saa ya kazi. Kwa hivyo, on Monday anasema saa hii ni saa ya kazi. Eh, kuria yule comedian. And uh, many Christians today are comedians because uh, they are in the church on Sunday, but on Monday they are in another life. Mungu atusaidie na aturehem. I am saying that uh, we need uh, to overcome this idea of embracing uh, the self-centered attitude. Self-centered attitude is so much present today among many believers. Uh, look at chapter 4, verse number 1 and 2. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, Maombi Ambayo, it is complaining about someone who has been forgiven. Na hapa watu wakona maombi ya ina hiyo, watu ambao 
They are complaining to God in prayer because the Lord chose to forgive someone somewhere. The Lord chose to bless somebody somewhere. Now they are complaining in prayer. Jonah, hypocrisy, following him. He is complaining in prayer. He prayed in verse number two to the Lord. Oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That's uh, why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a, a gracious and a compassionate God, uh, slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents, uh, uh, a God who relents uh, from sending calamity. Jonah complaining. You know, chapter number four is uh, the debate between God and uh, Jonah. You know, Jonah is complaining. Because Ninevites in chapter number 3, they have uh, gone down. They have uh, broken it down. You know, in some, the Bible says, uh, the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. The Lord shall not despise such kind of a heart. And the Ninevites uh, had gone down. The king of Nineveh had called upon the Ninevites uh, people and uh, animals. Uh, they had gone on prayer and uh, fasting to seek the Lord for forgiveness and in response to that God chose to forgive them but Jonah is not happy because they are forgiven that is an attitude of self-centeredness the reason why today the gospel is not fast and advancing. Injilia yendelei kwa haraka. Vile inatakikana kuendelea. Because some of us, we wish our brothers dead. We wish our sisters dead. We wish our uncles dead. We wish our hands dead. We wish our grandmothers dead. No wonder, diyo maana mawaji meongeseka. Because your attitude is that of self-centeredness. Kuna wenginu kiambiwa waombe. You cannot pray for them. Pray for your anger. He's a drunkard man, but uh, God is not limited in saving. He can change his life, but you don't want to pray. That is where we are. We have chosen to embrace uh, the self-centered attitude, uh, whereby we are uh, not happy when God is forgiving others. Uh, we are uh, not happy when God is blessing others. Uh, Reverend, uh, from the time when I changed my car, my friends reduced. Hata juzi nikasikia propaganda ingini ya kwamba atisikuisi reverend ilove asalimii watu. Nani anawaza kumbali na hiyo propaganda? Atisisalimii watu. Eh? Mimi sisalimii watu kwa sababu ni naendesha tu. Hii kangari kandogo hii. Wata mba ute. Eh? Wakati tutasonga hapo mbele. Kuna kusonga hapo mbele. And I know Reverend Mwoki, you are also praying and trusting the Lord that in the near future, ujue, the more you are climbing the ladder of life, the smaller the circle becomes and the enemies start increasing. Now, there is one in jealousy and the self-centeredness. Ya kufikiria ya kwamba, God can only bless you and not others. Jonah thought that God can only bless him and the Israelites and not other nations. You are cheating yourself. Sasa in addition the other day in Kaama. Tangu ni ame, not many people wa, walikuja wakani congratulate. Asio, ata sio kuja, kuniandikia tuka message, congratulations reverend, you are now at your own home. Embracing the self-centered attitude, that is where many of us are. We are not happy when we hear of others are advancing and getting blessed. But I want to say, God will graciously uplift you. Amen. Mungu atakuinua kama wanataka kama hawataki. Eh, lakini mimi sijaacha kusalimia watu na salimia watu na tembelea watu namna hiyo. Hata mwingine akasema ni pesa ya kanisa tumekula anashangaa. Vile hisi kikapu zinakuwa mount up. Eh, kutoka hii kona zinaenda kona ile ingine. Sisi tutapatana na pesa wapi Reverend? Hata inapelekwa mbanga tujui lakini kuna wale ambao they know how to promote the propaganda 
Because of self-centered attitude, that is where Jonah is embracing the self-centered attitude. When I was carefully observing the chapter number four, there are personalized words that are sounding louder and louder. These are in verse number one. Jonah was greatly displeased and angered. That one speaks a lot. Because of what God had done to Ninevites, you are greatly displeased and anchored because God has chosen to forgive someone else somewhere. Was greatly displeased and anchored. First number two, he prayed to the Lord. Is this not what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? Is this not what I said? Underlining the word, I said. The pronoun I is uh, an indication of uh, self-centeredness. What I said. In other words, uh, you are uh, taking yourself before God uh, as an authority to decide on the lives of others when God in his jurisdiction, when he chooses to bless someone, uh, he does not consult anyone at all. Is this not what I said, Lord? When I was still at home, and I mungu maswali, and uh, the questioning continues. Uh, verse number two. I knew that is another indication of uh, a self-centered act. I knew. Nilijua wewe ni mungu mwenye kujawa na rehema. I knew that you are a gracious and a compassionate God. Slow to hunger and abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. Then in verse number three, Jonah says, For it is better for me to die. Look at the pronouns. I and me. I and me. If your life is about I and me, I and my family, success, I and my family, we are succeeding. It is not about others. Stop a minute, my brother. You need to change your attitude because that is an attitude of self-centeredness, an attitude of self-centeredness. And I came across uh, some educative quotes uh, when I was uh, preparing this sermon. A man by the name J.S. Feltz, Anasema Yakwamba, you will never be able to fulfill your purpose until your life quits uh, being about you. What wengine ile shida yao, kubwa wakonayo, they can go far. God can still uh, open their doors and uh, bless them. But because your life is about uh, myself, your life is about uh, me, your life is about uh, I, you are uh, going to just remain there. You will never realize uh, your purpose. That is uh, J.S. Feltz. Another man by the name Steph Ada, Anasema Akwamba, self-centered people have only one topic to talk about. Uh, self-centered people they have only one topic to talk about, uh, and that topic is uh, themselves. Themselves. That is where our politicians are. You know, sometimes I listen to Kenyan politics and I say, Mungu aturemu Kenya. Because our, our presidential candidates, uh, our governors, uh, our members of uh, uh, parliament uh, who are aspiring, uh, our members of county assembly who are aspiring, uh, the idea is not that uh, others can be better leaders. Uh, the principle of the church does not apply in the political world. Banaroi yuko hapa, and I know. Lakini ndiyo mimi naona roi, that is one of the reasons why Mungu alikuzuia kuingia. Because wewe, you don't want to talk about yourself. You want to talk about others. Eh? Lakini wanasiasa wetu, eh, kiongozi wa eh, Kenya kwanza kisimama, kiongozi wa azimio kisimama, kila moja, aoni yule mwingine akiwa mwema kuliko yeye. I wish the language of our politicians uh, can change uh, and we hear somebody like uh, Laila Amolo Dinga saying that uh, wananchi wa Kenya, wananchi wa Kenya, eh? Wananchi wa Kenya, mjambo bwana Yesu asiviwe. Eh, William Samoei Ruto can make to be a good leader, but I want this time to lead Kenya. Unajua that is a statement also. That statement can win 
William Samoei Ruto can make a good leader in this country, but I want you to entrust me for just uh, five years to see what I am going to do to Kenya. That is a statement without selfishness. But because our politicians are beating their chest, calling each other's names, insulting one another. Hata watoto wa Kenya wako na mbati mbaya sana kuzigiliza wanasiasa wetu. Kuzi huyu anaitwa Mwizi, mwingine anaitwa Sijui kitenda wili, na mna hiyo hiyo mambo yote. Kuitana majina, that is where we are. Na kumbaliana na uli jamaa mbaya anasema Self-centered people have only one topic to talk about uh, themselves Mimi ndiyo ninaweza wengine awawezi Mimi ndiyo ata reverend mwoki Sio sisi tunaweza kuumbiri katika hii madambao Others can preach in this altar Na umoja ijae saidi But uh, for God's sake uh, This particular time and moment uh, We have been entrusted humbly with this great ministry. Can you say an amen? Na si ati ya kwamba ni si, na sisi tuko gracious. Sisi tuko, kabila anasimama hapa, wakati mwingine wa umbiri wengine wanakuja, but I tell you wanasiasa, mungu wa tureemu. And I wonder some of them, they also come from the church. But uh, the message of counting others better, and the same case uh, happening uh, to Pandei Ngini can also happen in this other side. Ruto can also commend Laila and say that uh, I know that uh, Laila Molo Ndinga can make to be a good president, uh, but I am beseeching and uh, humbly calling upon Kenyans uh, to choose me. Lakini wana siyasa, it is beating their chest and uh, showing how someone is able than others. Uh, that is where we are. Self-centered attitude. Dio uh, inatuangamisa Kenya. And even when our politicians are uh, promised Sing us uh, heaven and earth. It is just uh, a word of mouth. Wakiingia pale, the first week, mambo inambandilika, and we start to see other things uh, happening. May God have mercy on Kenya, because uh, our biggest problem with our leaders uh, is self-centeredness. And I want to educate you that uh, we need to take care when it comes to that. Uh, it is not about calling others' names. Uh, it is counting others better than yourselves. Uh, that is the biblical principle. And sometimes uh, we can build ourselves by advancing the lives of others. Lakini ukiona watu ambao, they beat their chest and they say, I am better than yourself. Wait. Another man by the name Charles Lewis, C.S. Lewis, Charles Lewis anasema ya kwamba, true humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking yourself less. True humility is not thinking yourself less, but uh, thinking of yourself less. Not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. In other words, uh, Charles Lewis is saying that uh, I know the beginning point should be, I know that I am a man of many weaknesses. I know that I am a man of many shortcomings, uh, but God, if affecting my leadership, uh, I can take you somewhere. Can I hear a shout of amen? God, if affecting my leadership, uh, I can take Kenya somewhere. I know that uh, people have talked a lot about me, but I know with the God, if affecting my leadership, uh, I can take Kenya somewhere. I can take Embakasi West somewhere. I can take Umoja Ward somewhere. I can take Makueni constituency somewhere. I can take Kitui Central somewhere. God enabling me, even when I am a man of many weaknesses and efforts. That is Charles Lewis. True humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. The prophet Jonah was so much obsessed about, uh, by himself that others uh, were of no good use uh, in the kingdom of God. When you are obsessed so much of yourself, but others are of no good use in the kingdom of God, that is the beginning of your failure. Another unknown author said that uh, stop trying to embrace others uh, with the things that you own. Now, yeah, that is where the pride is. Kuna watu ambao, 
they, they, they want to embrace others by the things that they are owning. Don't you know eh, the things that they are owning? Ujamaa kasema, stop to embrace eh, others with the things that you own. Eh. Begin in inspiring them by the way that you live. Jona kumaleana na ule jama mungina alisema akwamba, when God has increased your income, don't change your lifestyle, but uh, improve your service to him. Improve your service to him. Don't change your lifestyle. Improve your service to him. In other words, uh, be more of uh, inspiring others. Uh, like in, uh, when the inspiration is only on you and your family, and uh, you are always uh, impressed with uh, the things that you own uh, and not inspiring others. Uh, I tell you there is a problem somewhere. Self-centeredness has taken uh, place in your life. Second point, uh, Christians are becoming a problem to the world of sinners uh, because of, uh, number two, deception uh, that they have the final say. Deception that they have the final say. You are a director in that particular company and an institution. You are the manager in that particular company and an institution. You are in charge of that particular department. But stop threatening others that uh, they cannot do without you. They can still do without you. Deception in that uh, they have the final say. Where's you kafanya bila mimi? I have the final say over your life. You know, there are so many ways you can be sacked, you can be dead, and the life for others continues. Uh, we need sometimes uh, to breathe in before we say some statements. And so we are saying that uh, Christians are becoming a problem to the world of sinners because uh, deception that uh, they have the final say is so much on the increase. Reverend Ilube, you cannot do without us. You need to know that. Reverend Mwoki, you cannot do without us. You need to know that. You need to know that. You know, you are, where ikifika kiwango iyo, ujue ya kwamba, the humanity has taken over. Christians are becoming a problem to the world of uh, sinners because uh, deception that they have the final say is so much on the increase. And ikakumbuka ule wimbo mutamu sana ambao unabariki maisha yet. Who has the final say? Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah. He makes a Where does Jehovah as the fight no say. Tabadali stop being threatened by people. Jehovah God has the final say over your life. Jehovah God has the final say over your family. Witchcraft does not have the final say. Your enemies do not have the final say. Church leaders do not have the final say. Local church council does not have the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Can I hear a shout of amen? amen? Can we celebrate the Lord? Amen. Jehovah has the final say. Namungu akamulisa Jonah. Is it right for you to be angry? In other words, God is asking Jonah, who are you to question what I have done? Who are you to question who I am blessing? Who are you to question who I am forgiving? Because God in his jurisdiction can choose to save and deliver anyone. Who are you to question my authority as God? In other words, God is asking Jonah, Jonah, please, do you know who I am? And that is uh, the same language that God communicated with Moses. I am who I am. Jonah, please, uh, you are limited in understanding as a human being. You are limited in understanding as a human being. Hold your words uh, sometimes uh, before you speak them because uh, God in his jurisdiction and the power can choose to do anything uh, to anyone. 
Jonah, please uh, stick to your assignment and uh, leave the results to me. Fanya ile kasi nilikupatia. We umbiri neno. Dio maana Reverend Mwoki and Reverend Ilube. Let's preach the word and we leave the results to God. Sisi atujui ata watu na majina yao. Where they come from. Our purpose here is only one. Preaching the message of God and leaving the results to God. No wonder that is the principle of evangelism and missions. We preach the word. We leave the results to God. Can I hear shout of Amen. While I'm about to follow with me, can you wave at me? Yes, preaching the word and uh, leaving the results to God. This coming Saturday, we are having the evangelism and the missions seminar. Na mimi nasema, ata kama wewe siyo wa evangelism and the missions plan to come. Reverend Luke Odiambo of AIC Milimani. A man well seasoned uh, with the times that we are living is our speaker this coming Saturday. Na tunaitaji washiriki ambao wako na mwito wa kupeleka injili wakuje tuungane pamoja tufundishwe tupeleke injili ya Yesu Kristo mbele we are saying that eh, Jonah had only one assignment to preach the word lakini hata ile message ambayo Jonah alihubiri akuhubiri the message of grace unajua kuna wakati mwingine wa umbiri tunaweza kuingiliwa na roho mbaya and i am saying that roho mbaya Siate anaka lakini anatuingilia. And Jonah was not preaching a gracious message. He was preaching a judgmental message. 40 days and Nineveh will be no more. 40 more days and Nineveh will be no more. That was his message. He was not uh, telling the Ninevites that uh, our God is gracious and slow to anger, abounding in love, not wanting anyone to perish, but that all may come to the saving knowledge. That was not the message of Jonah. The message of Jonah was, uh, God, rain the fire from heaven, like you did uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah, destroy the Ninevites, uh, that they will be no more. And now you are here in the name of Watu ambao, they are calling others' names. Eh, wanaulisa how some politicians can find their way in the church. Kwa sababu ni wanganga. Unajua, those words are a very weight. Take your time. God can forgive anyone. God can forgive anyone. Even the mganga in your village. The mganga in your family. God can forgive anyone. Take your time before you pass judgment on others. Deception that they have the final say. Church, let's not be deceived by men that uh, uh, they have the final say. God has the final say. God's power to save and restore is independent in nature. Let's keep on sharing the message of grace and mercy. God's, God is not limited to what the people are saying about you. God is planning better things for you. Deception that they have the final say is affecting the world of sinners. Number three, I want to propose uh, and submit to us that uh, Christians are becoming a problem to the world of sinners uh, because uh, they are more, and uh, take this one uh, so well, they are more of theoretical than practical. Christians today are more of theoretical than practical. In verse number two, Jonah is saying, I knew, I knew. So he, well, he was well fast uh, with the knowledge of the Bible that God is gracious, uh, God is merciful. You know, those are theological terms. Uh, we are saying in theology that uh, if you have all the theory about God, but it is not applicable in your practical life, uh, I tell you, that is uh, totaling to nothing full of theory, but less practical. Your life is not a, a practice of what you know. Ndiyo tunasema akwamba, knowing about God is different from knowing God. Many of us, they know about God. Munajua kuhusu mungu. That uh, mungu ni moja katika utatu, God is one in three persons. God is the Father. God is the Son and God is the Holy Spirit. He and Fundisha Kwamba Katikisimi is at the corner. By the way, from this coming Sunday, Wale Watuazima and Aitaji Kubatiswa to Taonana, to Taonana. We want to start a Katikisim class from 11. Mba itakuwa inachukua wana wa 11 to noon. Idiotu kapte watu wa English na watu wa Kiswahili service. 
wale wa catechism and out sambao wanataka but i am saying that uh, when you are well fast with all the knowledge jonah as a prophet you know a prophet alikuwa amesoma vitabu vyote or uh, the pentateuch and uh, the other available uh, manuscripts wakati huo the bible was not fully combined but there were the official manuscripts that were accepted in christian and godly gatherings jonah was well fast but practically he was failing Many of us are well fast. Their fathers and their mothers who are Christians, their fathers and their mothers who are church leaders, you are well fast with the knowledge of God, but practically you are failing. You are full of theory, but less practical. Christians becoming a problem to the world of sinners because uh, they are more of uh, theoretical than practical. Mungu aturehemu na atusaidie. No wonder ndio in Kenya even when we say Christians are 80% but practically we can say 20% practice their Christianity. You hear of things that are happening they tell you that uh, many Christians are not out uh, to practice uh, their knowledge about God. Kama kuna watu wanatendeana mambaya wako ndani ya kanisa, watu ambao wanaweza wakakuendea kipapendicho la kiorisondo the way reverend anaiwekanga they are in the church full of theory about God but practically failing in their living. Marriage is uh, in the church. Ndio maana I think in the near future we might uh, propose some amendments because hii idea ya ili ukue kiongozi kanisani lazima uwe umeoa na ndoa ya kanisa. Kuna watu wameoa na ndoa ya kanisa na ni wambaya sana. Na kuna wengine hawakoa na ndoa ya kanisa na wameokoka ni wazuri sana. Sasa hii judgment sasa. Hapo Reverend tutahitaji Mungu atusaidie. Ah kuoa na kanisa lakini anapenda mke wake sana. Wanapendana sana na mke wake. Anapendana sana na mume wake. Lakini wale wengine ambao they married in a holy matrimony in the church wanatendeana mambaya. They are doing bad things to their husbands. They are doing bad things to their wives. We need a moment of paradigm shift that we change our focus from theoretical to practical. Can I hear an amen? Na jamaa mmoja ambaye anaitwa Albert Einstein akasema kwamba in theory, theory and the practice are the same. In theory. Huyu ni Albert Einstein. Anasema in theory, theory and the practice are the same. In practice they are not. Sawa sawa. In practice they are not. When it comes to practice uh, the theory now must take another shape and we see the true person of yourself coming out i agree with albert einstein that in theory theory and practice appear the same but in practice they are not mungu atusaidie our point number 4 the last point christians are becoming a problem to the world of sinners because number 4 thinking that uh, the saving grace is limited to some the saving grace is not for everyone mungu ambaye ameniokoa mungu ambaye amenitendea na amenifikisha mahali amenifikisha hawezi akafikisha wengine hapo nyinyi wengine you are trying but uh, you can't get to where i am you can't get to where my wealth is i want to tell you that uh, that is a deception thinking that uh, the saving grace is limited to some no the prophet John enjoyed God's provision of a fine Mungu akamweka mahali na hiyo vine ambao Mungu alikosi ikamea ikaletea Jonah uh, some good moment and at that time and Jonah was happy the same God who provided a fine also provided a worm to chew it and uh, Jonah was not happy and so when Jonah was not happy this experience uh, to Jonah was a lesson to him that uh, God's grace is not limited to some. Hata wewe ambayo unaona umeendelea, hata wewe ambayo unaona umebarikiwa, hata wewe ambayo unaona umefika, 
God still can change things. Mungu akaleta mnyama akaoma ile vaine. Jona akaingia kwa shida tena, akaanza kumkasirikia Mungu. Mungu akamuuliza swali. Nine bites a hundred and twenty thousand people and a cattle. Eh, mimi ni mwasamea, wewe au furai. Sasa wewe saa hii vile hii mti ambao nilikuwa nimeifanya ikamea nimeifanya ikakauka and you know that is how sometimes uh, god is doing things that uh, sometimes uh, where our hope is for god to teach you a lesson he can take that that up kando kidogo ndio aone utareact namna gani brothers and sisters let's slow down our god is gracious and merciful abounding in love not wanting anyone to perish the saving grace uh, is not limited to some Jonah thought that uh, the saving grace was limited to him and uh, the Israelites uh, but uh, God is proving to him that uh, the saving grace uh, is not limited to some Mungu ambaye amekuinua anaweza akainua wengine Mungu ambaye amekuweka pale anaweza akakuweka chini na akainua mwingine the saving grace uh, is not limited to some May the Lord help us. Karibu sana Reverend. Time is not on our side. Nimemaliza ujumbe wangu. May God bless you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord that uh, uh, this message in the book of Jonah, you know it is a requirement before we graduate in our masters we, publi we publish. And I'm looking forward uh, because we have the, the, the recorded media. One time I have also the printed media a booklet. I can produce a a booklet, the book of Jonah applied. Muneombe sana. Thank you.